Ladies and gentlemen, with the previous lecture, we've started with chapter four. Chapter four is on the differential relations for fluid flow, and it's got 10 subparts. We've started with a general overview of why we are specifically interested in differential equations. And then we've started with 4.1, which was the acceleration field. The acceleration field is important because usually when we've got the mass, then the mass and the acceleration, we can get the forces. Now we didn't complete this section, so let's complete it today. What we did is we've started looking at the velocity vector, which was defined like that already previously in your course, and then we've looked at the acceleration of it, and we've used the chain rule, and with the chain rule, we have derived the three different components of acceleration, and those three components were, in this format, the acceleration in the x direction is equal to partial du dt plus the grot of the one component of the velocity vector which is u so that is in the x direction in the y direction it is equal to partial dv dt plus the grot of the velocity component v small v the y component of the velocity vector and the third one the acceleration in the z direction is equal to partial d w dt plus the grot of w okay so this we could sum into a vector because these three components together would form the acceleration vector A. Okay. These three, U, V, and W, can be written as the partial derivative of the V dt of the vector V. Okay. And these three would be the grad of these three components the velocity vector v. So that is the shorthand notation for the acceleration. This term is called the local acceleration. The local acceleration. And this term is called the convective acceleration. When we've got a steady state problem, what does steady state mean? It means that there are no changes as a function of time. So if there are no changes as a function of time, then usually that component, or not usually, then that component would disappear. So it's important to know that. Another format that this equation can be written in <coughs> Another format is to write it as the acceleration is equal to the VDT partial plus the U component of the VDX plus the V component partial the VDY plus W partial the VDZ. That is just another convenient format that we can use to write the acceleration in. Most of this mathematics, many of you did two years ago, maybe you don't remember it that well, maybe a year ago, but just in terms of the revision in terms of the nomenclature that we normally use. Okay. So in terms of the nomenclature, the grot is this symbol. We say that is equal to the grot. And the grot mathematically is equal to ddx in the i direction 
plus partial ddy in the j direction plus partial ddz in the k direction. So that is the grot. Then we sometimes talk of the compact dot, the compact dot product. Compact dot product involving the velocity vector v and the gradient operator, the gradient operator grot. Okay. And the compact dot product, the velocity and grot is called the divergence. The divergence, which can be written as u partial du dx plus v partial, sorry, sorry, u partial d dx plus v partial d dy plus w partial d dz. Okay, and the other one is then the divergence of the velocity vector. Divergence of the velocity vector, and that would be the divergence. Remember, that is the divergence. And the divergence of the velocity vector would then be that part, the divergence of the velocity vector, written like that. And that would be equal to u of dv dx plus v partial dv dy plus w partial dv dz, where the v is equal to the velocity vector. Okay, that's just a little bit of a revision of mathematics in terms of nomenclature. Let's look at an example. The example is example 4.1 in the seventh edition of white. The seventh edition of white. Now I'm going to do the example a little bit different than in the textbook, so I'm going to use a different approach. What is given is the Eulerian velocity vector field of 3t in the i direction plus xz in the j direction plus ty squared in the k direction. So in terms of our Eulerian coordinate system, x, y, z, there it is, x, y, z, with our three unit vectors in the i direction, the j direction, and the k direction. In that we've got this velocity vector v. And it will have its three velocity components, small u, small v and w in that direction. And it's an Eulerian velocity field which means that this coordinate system is fixed as a function of x, y and z. It doesn't move together with the particles or with the velocity vector. Okay. Right, what is asked from us is to determine the total acceleration. Determine the total acceleration of this velocity field. Okay. Now let's just write it down again. This velocity field is equal to 3t in the i direction plus 
x multiplied by z in the j direction plus ty squared in the k direction. If we compare it to this velocity field, to this velocity field, which in general can be written as u, which is a function of x, y, z in t, plus v, again, x, y, z in t, plus w, which is a function of x, r, x y, z and t, that is our general equation for a velocity field, and we do the comparison, then it's extremely simple to see that Okay, now remember, this is in the i direction, the j direction, and the k direction. Okay, the i, I, j, I direction, the j direction, and the k direction. If we do that comparison, it's very simple to see that the small u is equal to, small u is equal to 3t, okay? The small velocity v is equal to xz and the small velocity w is equal to ty squared. Okay. You all happy with that? Very simple. Okay. Now in terms of the total acceleration, the total acceleration has three components. It has the component in the x direction in the y direction and in the k direction, x, y, and z directions. So what we're going to do is, we are going to determine each one of these components separately and then add them up. Okay, so that is the approach that we're going to use. So let's start with the first one. Okay. The acceleration in the x direction is equal to, we have derived it, is equal to the u dt plus u multiplied by the u dx plus v multiplied by the u dy plus w multiplied by the u dz. Let's just do the substitutions of all these terms. I know you don't have to do it. Many of you can, can do it without doing it in full. But let's just do it. That is ddt of u. And u is equal to 3t. Okay? Plus u, which again is equal to 3t, multiplied by ddx of 3t. Plus the next component is the velocity v. What is the velocity v equal to? x multiplied by z multiplied by uh, d dy of, again, 3t. <coughs> okay. Plus the last term, w, and w is equal to ty squared multiplied by d dz of, again, u which is equal to 3t. You all happy with that? Okay. So, the first term is equal to 3. Okay. The next term is equal to We have to differentiate that to x, so that is equal to 0. That one to y, which is equal to 0. That one to z, which is also equal to 0. So it is equal to 3 times, and just to indicate it is in the x direction, remember the acceleration in the x direction, let's just put in i there, the unit vector i. Are you happy? Okay, let's do the next one. 
in the y direction, the acceleration in the y direction is equal to partial dv dt plus u multiplied by the partial v dx plus v multiplied by the partial v dy plus w multiplied by the partial v dz. Right, let's look at the first term, ddt of v and v is equal to x multiplied by z, okay, plus u, u is equal to 3 times t, ddx of v, v is x times z, plus v, x times z, d dy of v which is x times z plus w w is t y squared d dz of again v and v is equal to x times z If we differentiate this term to t, it is equal to 0. If we differentiate this one to x, it is equal to z, but we still have the 3t there, so it is 3tz. Okay? This one to y, that is equal to 0, and that y to z, so it would be x multiplied by ty squared. So ty squared multiplied by x. Okay. And if we make it a little bit neat, we can write it as 3 times, and if we use the format of first the x, then a y, then a z, then a t, then we're going to say it is 3 times z t plus x times y squared t, and that is all in the j direction, because it's the acceleration in the y direction. Any questions? Simple. Right. Third one is the acceleration in the z direction. In the z direction it is partial dw dt plus u multiplied by partial dw dx plus v multiplied by the partial v dy plus v multiplied by the partial v dz. Okay. The third component of acceleration. The first term is ddt of w, and w is equal to ty squared. Okay. Plus u, and u is equal to 3t. 3t multiplied by ddx of w, w is ty squared. Okay, plus the v velocity component, which is x times z, multiplied by d dy, of w, which is ty squared, plus w, which is ty squared, multiplied by d dz of w which is ty squared. Okay, the differentiation of the first term is equal to, if we differentiate that to t it is equal to y squared. y squared plus this one to x is equal to zero plus this one to y would be x times z multiplied by t multiplied by 2y. Okay? Plus this one to z would be equal to y. Okay. So 
can be written as y squared plus 2 times taking out the constant, then first putting in the x, then the y, then the z, multiplied by t, all in the, in the z direction. Okay. So we've got the three acceleration terms now, which means that the total acceleration, so the total acceleration which is equal to A, A in the x direction, multiplied by the acceleration in the y direction, the acceleration in the z direction, Acceleration is then equal to its three different components, x, y, and z, which means that we just need to add them all up, and make them neat, and that would be equal to 3i plus 3zt plus xy squared tj plus y squared plus 2x, y, z, t in the k direction. So there's the total acceleration field. Any questions? Okay, let's look at problem 4.3 at the back of your at the back of the chapter. At the end of the chapter there are some problems. So this is problem 4.3 in the textbook of White in the 7th edition. And it gives us a converging nozzle. This converging nozzle looks like this. It converges like that. And it gives us that the u component of the velocity, small u, is equal to v0 multiplied by 1 plus 2x divided by L. Okay. Where that would be x equal to 0. Okay. This would be x equal to L, okay. and L is 150 millimeters, and it gives us that V0 is the inlet velocity, V0, and the outlet velocity is equal to 3 times V0, okay. 3 times V0 where V0 is equal to 3 meters per second. Thus, the inlet velocity is 3 meters per second, the outlet velocity is equal to 9 meters per second. It also gives us that the velocity component V is approximately equal to 0, and oh, not V as a vector, just the velocity component, and then in the z direction it is also approximately equal to zero. So it's a one-dimensional problem. Okay. And what is asked from us is firstly a general expression for the fluid acceleration. A general expression for the acceleration. That's the first thing that is being asked. And then secondly, they ask us, what is the acceleration at the inlet and at the outlet? The inlet and outlet accelerations are asked. Okay, 
let's look at our acceleration equations that we've derived in terms of its three components. In the x direction, partial du dt plus u multiplied by du dx plus v multiplied by du dy plus w multiplied by du dz. In the acceleration in the y direction, equal to dv dt plus u multiplied by dv dx plus v multiplied by dv dy plus v double multiplied by dv dz. Okay. The second one, and then the third term, third one, in the z direction, dw dt plus u multiplied by dv dx plus v multiplied by dw dy plus w multiplied by dw dz. Still writing or are you with me? Can I go on? Okay. Okay, now if we now look at this equation, what is given, and we look at all those terms, then it might look a little bit daunting and confusing. But the best advice is stay calm, look at it systematically. Okay. The first thing that we see is with, that, with all these equations is the partial derivatives, derivative as a function of time. Okay. So what it would mean is that if it is a steady state problem, then those terms would be zero. What is steady state? Steady state would be if I look at one of those components, maybe the u velocity the v velocity or the w velocity, u, v, w, as a function of time. It means that they are constant. There are no changes as a function of time. When we start this thing, obviously, when you open the water, maybe, then it would be firstly zero, and then it would go up to that value, and, and then it would be a constant. Or when somebody would stop it here then it would be a change as a function of time. But there are no changes as a function of time. So it means it is a steady state problem. Steady state. Steady state would mean that the DDT of U, V, and W would be equal to zero. So those three terms would disappear. <coughs> Okay, what is also known is that the velocity component v is equal to zero. The velocity component v is equal to zero, so all three that is equal to zero, and therefore those three terms disappear. Okay, the same with w. Does it matter what that is? We've got zero multiplied by something with all three of those terms. So that would be equal to zero. Okay. Then what happens with, with these terms? Du dx, dv dx, and dw dx. Okay. V, V, and now. Remember, that was as a function of t. If we would go and look at the velocity v, the velocity v is equal to zero. Okay. So that is zero if we measure it as a function of x. It's a function of x. You agree, if you would plot it like that. Everywhere along here, if you plot v, 
then it is equal to zero. So its gradient is also equal to zero. Okay. So that term is also equal to zero. So V and W are constants. Okay. So therefore, dV dx would be equal to zero. And Vw dx would be equal to zero. <coughs> but, so, what is the result? The acceleration is equal to, the acceleration in the x direction is therefore equal to u multiplied by partial du dx. A very, very simple equation. Okay, u is equal to that term. So it is equal to v0 multiplied by 1 plus 2x divided by L multiplied by dx of u and u again is equal to v0 1 plus 2x divided by L. Okay. So let's just write this first part down. V0 multiplied by 1 plus 2x divided by L. If we do the differentiation of this term, that would be equal to 0. And that would be equal to 2 times divided by L, but we have to remember to multiply in the V0. Okay. Because it is actually equal to 2 times V0x divided by L. The differentiation to x would be equal to 1, 2 V0 divided by L. <coughs> okay. So we can make it neat and write it as 2 times V0 squared divided by L multiplied by 1 plus 2x divided by L and that would be the first part of the question our general expression for acceleration The next part of the problem was to determine the acceleration where x is equal to 0 and where x is equal to L. So we just need to do the substitution. B at x equals 0. Then the acceleration would be equal to 2 times V0 squared divided by L. And that is equal to 2 times V0 is equal to 3, 3 meters per second. L is 150 millimeters, so it is equal to 0.15 meters. And the result is 120 meters per second square. The acceleration at the inlet. Okay. In terms of G's, that is about 10 G's. Now, at x equal L, the acceleration in the x direction would then be equal to 2 times <coughs> 3 squared divided by 0.15 multiplied by 1 plus 2 times x which is 0.15 divided by 0.15 L which is equal to 360 meters per, meters per second square.
Any questions? Let's start with paragraph 4.2. 4.2, the textbook of White, is the differential equation of mass conservation, or also known as the continuity equation. We're going to derive that by considering an infinitesimal small control volume of dx, dy, and dz. And let's draw it like this. Obviously, I'm going to draw it now quite large. But in terms of its coordinate system, that is the x direction. That direction is y. And in this direction is z. That is equal to dx, dz, and dy. An infinitesimal small control volume. Not drawn as small now, but drawn so that it is easy for us to see all the things that we're going to add to the control volume. So very small control volume of dimensions dx, dy, and dz in the x, y, and z directions. And what we're going to do is let's consider the mass flow rate through the control volume. Now mass flow rate mass flow rate can be written for, as rho multiplied by an area multiplied by a velocity. Okay. That is just now a general equation. That is just general. Okay. And the reason I'm giving it like that as a general thing is, let's look at the components of mass flow flowing through this control volume. And we look at it going into the x direction, so in going into that face, and here going out of that face. So we only consider the two components in the x direction, flowing into the, into the control volume and flowing out of the control volume. If we look at the mass flow rate flowing into the control volume, we can say it is equal to the density multiplied by the area. What is the area through which it flows? The area would be equal to dy dz. Okay? Multiplied by the velocity, and the velocity is equal to small u of our vector. Three different components, u, v and w. So we're talking of the x direction component of the velocity. So maybe it is a good thing actually to also show our velocity field here in general as something like that, which we know as three components u, v and w. Something like that. Okay. So that is going in. What would the mass flow rate be going out? What would the mass flow rate be going out? You might like to say, well, it would be the same, but that is not true because there might be some of the mass flow going into this face and going out in that face. So it is not the same going in and out in one direction. It is going to be rho u plus d rho u dx multiplied by dx and everything multiplied by dy dz. Now if you do not know immediately where it comes from, don't worry, I'm going to explain it to you just now. I'm going to make it clear just now. 
just in terms of general fundamentals, let's suppose we've got a wall or something like that, and we've got a general function, something like that. Then we can as assume that that mathematical function, f as a function of x, can actually be described very well by a straight line if this is very small. Okay, so if we make the dx very, very small, then it would be a very good assumption. Okay. Okay, so if that would be equal to dx. So if that is equal to rho u, then that would be equal to rho u plus d rho u dx multiplied by dx. Now you've done that many times in mathematics, but again, now where does it come from? What is the logic behind it? And one simple way of making it clear to yourself is to say, well, let's look at this problem, the same problem, and we say that is equal to three units. Okay, might be three centimeters or three millimeters or three microns, whatever. Very small, relatively, in terms of that function. And let's suppose this function y is given as 2x plus 2, its equation. The equation that describes it is equal to 2x plus 2. Okay. Now if that is equal to, where x is equal to 0, then that value would be equal to 2. Okay, x equal to 0, so y is equal to 2. If x is equal to 3, it would be 2 times 3 to 6 plus 2, and that would be equal to 8. Okay. That would now be if the function is known. But let's suppose we look at it differently. We say it is equal to that value, which is 2, row u, row u, 2 and 2, which is that constant, plus the gradient of this, which is equal to 2, multiplied by 3, which is equal to 8. Okay, so that is where it comes from. It is just using a linear line and using the gradient multiplied by x, together with the fact that you know what the value is at the inlet face. So that is where it comes from. Okay. Mathematically, my explanation might not be mathematically 100% correct, but in principle that is what we are doing. You agree? Okay. So that is equal to rho u <coughs> multiplied by d rho u dx dx multiplied by the face, which is equal to dy dz. Okay. Now it's going to be very messy if I start doing it in the y direction and in the z direction also. So let's be a little bit patient. We are going to do it, but be a little bit patient. And let's rather make it a little bit more neat and write it as follows. We say, let's look at the y x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. We look at the inlet face and we look at the outlet face. The inlet face and the outlet face. Of the three different components, flow components X, Y, and Z. Okay, going in in the X direction would be equal to rho U multiplied by dy dz. Okay. In the Y direction, the y direction it would be equal to rho v multiplied by dx multiplied by dz dx multiplied by dz okay so that is equal to rho v multiplied by dx multiplied by dz okay in the z direction 
it would be coming from that face there at the back into like that and that one would be equal to rho multiplied by its velocity component which is W multiplied by the face that it enters is dx dy so those are the three inlet components okay the outlet component the first one in the x direction is equal to rho u plus d rho u dx multiplied by dx multiplied everything by dy dz okay. I'm not going to try to put in the three outlet velocity components there because I ju just do not enough, have enough space makes it just too messy but I'm sure you understand what I mean okay. in the y direction it would be equal to rho v plus ddy of rho v multiplied by dy multiplied by dx dz and in the z direction rho w plus ddz of rho w dz dx dy Okay, so what is our next step now? If we want to consider the continuity equation. Would you like to say everything going in those three terms is equal to those three terms? Is that what you would like to say? <coughs> not, why not? Uh, because there is an external input in the short space where it's changed yes you're on the right track but what do you mean there's a there's an external what okay what it is is the following let's suppose we've got a control volume we've got a control volume if if this control volume is already full if it's already full at time equals zero at time equals zero if you if this control volume is chock and block full if you put in three kilograms per second then three kilograms per second must go out on that side also do you agree if it's full but if it is not full then that is not correct okay so it's going to take a time to fill up so let's suppose it is empty or maybe at a certain constant level and three kilograms per second is going in and one kilograms per second is going out what happens with the mass of the control volume the mass of the control volume will increase by two kilograms per second so we have to take into consideration the change of mass of the control volume also when we put all those equations together and we will do that in our next lecture ok